Welcome back to Emotional Mojo. So is ADHD a condition or a curse? Our guest today is here to explain why he feels it's a gift. Welcome author and ADHD expert, Dr. Kevin Ross Emery. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So you have the most unique definition of ADHD <laughs> ever. Tell us what that is. Okay, I look at ADD and ADHD okay. as part of the evolutionary process, mm -hmm. broadening the bandwidth of humanity. These were the architects of the 20th century, and now they're the architects of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So since the late 90s, I have been talking about why it's not a disability, why it's not a disorder, and why it's become such a big cash cow. Oh, let's that's talk about the cash cow. Yeah, yes, I wanna hear about cow. that. You mean medications? Medication, well, you know, there are, it's a billion dollar industry now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not just medications, it's the services that are provided, right. it's the extra right. monies the schools get, it's the extra monies right. the parents get. But it all comes with strings. And guess where all those strings lead back to? So here, uh, you know, a family can get SSI benefits if they have a disabled child. That's right. But if the doctor says that that child should be medicated, and they don't put them on that medication, mm -hmm. they lose their benefits. That's right. So now, we are forcing you to medicate your child, even though these medications have black box warning labels, mm -hmm. right. which is permanent death or disability. These have horrible side effects, and there is a 20% misdiagnosis rate according to NIH. To yeah. So, but you say that it's actually a gift, so you don't necessarily want don't people to be medicated because you think it's a gift and it can actually give you a, a leg up. Oh, it's absolutely a gift. It's a gift for a number of different reasons. Okay. But you know, there's, there's a couple of places that you want to set the stage. You have always looked that there have been people throughout all of history who have been able to seem to pick up history and shift it. A, a Leonardo da Vinci, a Socrates, mm -hmm. you know, the people who thought mm -hmm. differently. Right. They were able to go in and think differently. Outside the box. Yep, mm -hmm. and now, come along somewhere in the 17, 1800s, we start to see these becoming an increasing numbers of people. Why? Because humanity is no longer in any kind of survival mode. Okay. Mm. And so now, we have developed the land, we have developed our humanity, though we won't get into that discussion. <laughs> and along the way, now we can start to really develop the intellect. Now the brain has more time. It has food sources. It's not worried about starving. It's not worried about all of these and things. And with that comes technology. So in my mind, I'm thinking kids today, mm -hmm. I sound really old now, <laughs> yeah. kids today have no, I know, right? Have like right. no attention span because they're constantly yeah. on, they're, they have that electronic stimuli. So for them to right. sit in a class and listen to a teacher is like, right. well, you know, because they're so used to TV mm -hmm. and video games and all that. Well, there's a research out that talks about how the fact that we shouldn't even be letting our kids play with handheld stuff until high school. Wow. Because it wow. does I'm actually, it, <laughs> it actually does interfere with yeah, the with our natural developing. growing. Yeah. Do you remember the Einstein, baby Einstein stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, they, do you notice how they disappeared? Well, that's because a lawsuit came up against him because it was showing that it was actually lowering baby's IQs hey. mm -hmm. by sitting there watching the TV instead of kinesthetically touching, yeah. right. interacting, right. exploring things like this. So we need to get the hand held away. We okay. need to not make television our babysitter. We need to not make computers our babysitters. And now they're saying, well, we can't absolutely prove it. Now this is one of those duh <laughs> moments, <laughs> but maybe exposing them to all of this violence is increasing violence. Oh, just a uh -huh. little bit, you know? But we can't, we can't prove yeah. it. Yes. All right, so let's I, talk about some celebrities. That Because yeah. you have a book, Famous People with ADHD, Jim Carrey, Olympian Michael Phelps, Paris Hilton, among other celebrities that have been affected. So you think, does, has this hurt their careers or helped their careers? I mean, you look at Jim Carrey and he has ADHD written yes. all over him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm just gonna say, the book is Famous People with ADHD. Are you one waiting to happen? Ooh, Ooh I like don't that. Don't forget the second part of the title. Yes. Are you one waiting to happen? Yeah. And fame does not necessarily just equate to celebrities. But I'm gonna ask you, answer your question because we are talking about famous people also like Einstein, Edison, Graham Bell. We're okay. talking about Michael Inventors. Phelps. We're talking about Eleanor Roosevelt. We are talking about people that have gone through every aspect of changing this world from science and medicine 
you know, to mm -hmm. statesmanship and all of these different things. Do it how, absolutely. Would Robin Williams be Robin Williams without his ADHD or Jim Carrey? No. <laughs> and what I find interesting is if you very carefully look at this, and you know, Adam Levine recently came out and he has been a spokesperson yeah. for one of the medications. Okay. Which I'm sure is not a free gig. Probably not. No. Mm -hmm. But uh, the question I really want to ask him, and I want to go, when you go in to actually create your music, when you became famous, were you yeah. taking those? Or was it when you wanted or had to become normalized? And this is part of the issue that we create. You know, in my first book, Managing the Gift Alternative Approaches for Attention Deficit Disorder, and it, that came out in 2000. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not new on this block. Right. Okay, I own this red light. <laughs> so, um, but I said that we should not have called it ADD, because that's what we called it back then. We should have mm -hmm. called it CIS, which is Cultural Inconvenience Syndrome. Okay. Mm -hmm. We medicate these children because they're culturally But I like what you're saying about that. With the medication, it kind of just holds people down. Yeah. Where you're saying with these creative celebrities that they're allowed to think outside the box. They're not medicated, right? Mm-hmm. So... It's, it's, it's helping in the thought process and the creativity. All right, we could talk about this for a very long time, but we do need to move on. Okay, so um, you can get more <laughs> on your books by visiting my, what's your website? MyDrKevin.com? MyDrKevin.com, M-Y-D-R-K-E-V-I-N. Go to the website, Perfect. that's also all my social media, Facebook, Twitter, get it. You put in M-Y-D-R-K-V-I-N, you will find me. <laughs> I'm right. there. So we're gonna, you're gonna love this game. This is a game okay. we call a Yes, it. No, all right? So first up, a Canadian teen was banned from playing on his baseball team because he refused to cut his hair he'd been growing for more than a year to donate to charity. His mother recorded this exchange with the coach. I said it's an admirable cause, okay? You could have mentioned that to me on Thursday night, though. Right? Last Thursday that that was the reason. I'm not going to say that it was going to make any difference. His so. hair does not change that. His hair does not change his ability. Okay, do you know what what this is right now? Is disrespect for my wishes. No, Kim. it's yes, not. Yes, it is. So the coach says he's been coaching for seven seasons. He's had to, you know, this is his job, is to keep up a certain, you know, look. So do you think the, the team should have to cut his hair? Yes or no? Yes, I'm Tim, tell, tell you me why. about it. Okay, the New York Yankees mm -hmm. cannot wear beards. Okay. And so, I mean, they're grown men. Yeah. So, you know, even though this guy That's is a little code. bit too military and I don't really like his tone, the uh -huh. coach, mm -hmm. it's still the way he is running his team. Okay. And I so agree. he's got to follow the rules. Well, and if I was being paid millions like a Yankee, I would not have a beard. <laughs> a beard either. All right, next up, the author of a health and fitness blog, Brooke on a Diet, not on a diet, excuse me, is taking Shape Magazine to task the reason they refuse to post her post-diet picture. So take a look at this picture. She lost 172 pounds, the old-fashioned way, counting calories and exercising. She blogged about it. The magazine contacted her to do a feature story and asked her for a success photo. She sent her this one, and they said, you need to put a shirt on. She declined and then blogged her response. If anything, they should want my picture on their site. My body is real, not photoshopped or hidden, because I feel like I should be ashamed after losing 172 pounds. Um, so what do you think? Should she have to put a shirt on and send a different picture? Or should the magazine now? Which one? Put this up. Oh. Uh, which... Should she have to put a shirt on? Uh, no. Upside down. No. <laughs> no, she's okay. Oh, you she's, think she should? She's proud of herself. Yeah. All right. But if she wants to be in a magazine, then she has to abide by the rules. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>